It's the stubby board. Do you like the, it? Yeah. Is it cool? Yeah, of the sun. Of the sun? <laughs> it's a sunny day in Southern California. Hey, Super Cruise is on. Look at that. You see the green light here on the on the steering wheel? Uh, Super Cruise is officially on. All right, so we are at the Bolt EV event here in Marina del Rey, California. This is the brand new Bolt EUV or electric utility vehicle. And uh, I gotta tell you, it actually looks better in person than the pictures. Um, the, the biggest styling difference really is that the daytime running light is separated from like the main light of the car. But um, otherwise, it's a pretty good looking car, pretty sharp. And this is the bigger model. So we are going to get in there with some car seats and some kid stuff and kind of see how it fits everything here shortly. But let's just kind of take a look around in general. It looks like it's kind of the same wheelbase, kind of the same platform as the, the, the regular model. That is the Bolt EV, the, the base one. So this is the original Bolt here. And um, you can kind of see where the similarities are, kind of the C-pillar, very similar but the front is way better looking. And I, I gotta tell you, I saw these things uh, in photo form and it looks way better in real life. Yeah, the back is just especially improved. Here's the back, kind of like an oversized hatchback kind of a look. Let's see what the, the new ones look like. The Bolt EUV has kind of more of a traditional kind of an SUV uh, rear end on it now. It looks kind of like a, like a Ford Escape or a, like a, some of these kinds of crossover class cars charge door I'm sure little logo right there oh right you can kind of see that here so yeah it looks like from like B pillar A pillar down to the front of the hood it's all kind of a straight line and that has more of a SUV kind of a style and it doesn't have the the little window which I'm not a huge fan of this one here so is uh, Super Cruise on both models just the EUV. EUV, okay, interesting. The the first thing is it has Apple CarPlay, which coming from a Tesla, I'll tell you is pretty welcome. Hey guys, just wanna confirm we're going to Castaway Restaurant, right? That's correct. All right. Super butter smooth, trans wow, it's really nice suspension. Very, very comfortable. Steering seems pretty responsive as well. I'd say it's a little bit sharper steering than that Mach-E that I drove. So the screen is at a angle like that, whereas if it were at an angle like this, a little bit more vertical, then I think there'd be less glare, but there's a fair bit of glare on the top part of the screen, but the screen is still really bright, really easy to read. My phone is down here in a little bin, which is, not, it's really out of sight, out of mind. Like you're not gonna be checking your phone at all, but it is uh, charging. So there's wireless charging for one phone in there. And then you've got like trash control off, looks like a lane keep assist. And oh, let's sport mode on. Yeah, the racing flag, that should have been the indication. <laughs> so now sport mode is on. Let's see if that feels different. It actually tells you how much, how many kilowatts the car is pulling instantaneously. That's pretty cool, look at that. So right now I'm pulling 25, 50, Tesla doesn't do that. They just give you like a watt hours per mile efficiency, but they don't actually give you like how many kilowatts you're, you're pulling in real time instantaneously, but it does here. I think the new one is better looking than before. And at $31,000, you know, before any incentives and stuff, I think it's a pretty good price point. This is closer to like a RAV4 or like a crossover SUV that you might be looking at if you have a family. So the EUV is six inches longer than the wheelbase, about 10 centimeters wider. So there's, it's just a generally bigger car. My biggest takeaway driving this car so far has been that the suspension is definitely tuned for comfort and it is really comfortable. Um, it is probably, you know, it's deflecting a lot more. So it's again, not tuned for sport, but the, the LA roads are notoriously terrible and this is another level of comfort above my performance model 3 for sure i think the original bolt had cloth and these new seats are leather um they're they're definitely a little more comfortable i just got a prompt telling me that super cruise is unavailable i think i i can use it now let's see super cruise unavailable no road information okay but it is doing the lane keep 
which is pretty standard stuff now for, for cars, but it's actually keeping me in my lane. Remember one I was telling you in the, uh, in the Mach-E that the, the braking uh, programming was just a little off? Yeah. The first 10, 20% of the, of the brake pedal and of the, uh, the accelerated pedal. But here with this, far better tuned. It feels very smooth. You wanna, you wanna see if we can't uh, let one of these guys get past? Go, there we go, here we go. I'm trying to find the efficiency mark. Let's see if I can figure out how to see how efficiently we're driving. Hey, Super Cruise is on, look at that. You see the green light here on the, on the steering wheel? Uh, Super Cruise is officially on. Hold to reset, let's see. Brilliant. Cool, so I just reset the efficiency number so we'll see how we're doing but it's saying 3.8 miles per kilowatt hour, which is good. It's driving really well. You notice how ahead of the, ahead of the turn it is and just how smooth it is? Mm -hmm. So I think the ultimate compliment you can give all this new tech is it feels like my Tesla, which the Mach-E wasn't there. Agreed? Will it change lanes for me? No. So <laughs> I had to change lanes manually. There's one of the new ones there in front of us and I'm gonna put it back in Super Cruise, why not? So we can all just talk. The layout of these buttons, the piano black is gonna be a fingerprint magnet, but right now it does look, what happened there? It just disengaged. So I found this out later, but the way Super Cruise actually works is there's a camera watching the driver for attention. So as long as you're paying attention, the car will carry on in Super Cruise. But if you look away like I did, and it doesn't see that you're paying attention, it'll start to warn you and get mad and eventually disengage. So unlike the Tesla where you have to keep shaking the wheel, this, if you're looking forward, it'll just keep on driving. I can speed up this way maybe, yep. So now I have it set to 70. All your climate controls are here. The, the seat heating is all these kind of nice rockers, kind of like, uh, like Mazda and Audi and stuff do. The gear shifter is, I'm sure other cars, other GM products have it too, but it's kind of like the, the Acura NSX is one of the first cars I remember had it. Uh, electronic parking brake. It has the same kind of old school power and power on start button kind of stuff. Uh, like a, a gas car, which it's an electric car. You don't need that kind of stuff. You should just be able to get in, put it in gear if, if the key fob is in here. By the way, here's the key fob. This is what it looks like. So it just did some heavy duty braking for me because, you know, it's Super Cruise. Super Cruise is pretty impressive, I gotta say. It feels really smooth. It has a, a refined nature to it. You know, it keeps lanes really well and it does a turn ahead of the time. And, it has that confidence, yes. We got a turn coming up. Let's make this turn and then we will come back and talk about one pedal driving, which, uh, you know, it, it's just, it shouldn't really be a feature or anything like that. It's just what every EV ought to have. The brakes are a little more, you got to really uh, get into them to slow down. I'm coming from Performance Model 3 where everything is really, really sharp. This is a little more focused on comfort, the brakes you gotta really get into. But the nice thing is they have a nice linear feel to them. The, the further you press on that pedal, it gives you that much more, more and more linear brake feel. An advantage, I think, over the Mach-E from my limited time driving both. So let's talk about the one pedal driving because now we're in Los Angeles. What is a day in Los Angeles without traffic? You wanna know what it's like to drive a Bolt EUV in LA? This is, this is what it's like. Okay, you're in, you're in bumper to bumper, stop and go traffic. And this is where Super Cruise really comes in handy because it'll take care of all that for you. And also the one pedal driving. So let's, let's try that out. You're going to see the little icon here for one pedal driving. I'm gonna turn that on and now I can feel it, yeah. So the minute you come off the accelerator, the, the car goes into regen pretty hard. Let's see, so I'm gonna speed up a little bit and then get off the pedal pretty good yeah it really does slow you down but I am now driving with one foot this is if you drive a bolt or any other EV make sure that one pedal driving whatever it's called they were saying hi, Rick. what they were saying hi. the guy in the Jeep yeah, yeah? wave at him uh, we got some we got some Chevy fans look at that you see I'll tell you what man you got to give Chevy some love 
they are converting gas factories over they are serious about this they're building evs they they could have just refreshed the face of the bolt and called it a day but you know their the next smart move to make an even bigger kind of a crossover size car they've done that we're in it now good for you man I, i'm really hoping when COVID o is over uh, what do you think we should go to michigan and, and tour some of their factories and their awesome. battery labs awesome. they're doing some big time stuff i want to see that ultium battery lab gm if you're watching uh, throw us an invite we'd love to come out there uh we'll fly out and i just want to see what you guys are doing for anybody who's who's not from la you gotta you gotta enjoy this a little here this yeah you see the road ahead <laughs> welcome to los angeles the city of angels and traffic. I'm gonna count to on on the number three. I'm gonna floor it. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. You feel the uh, you feel that delay. It's like a um, it's like a half second delay, and then the car kind of kicks in. And it, I think it's done on purpose. It, the the point is, I think, to take some of the some of the jitters out of your foot in case you're you know you're moving around a little bit and it gives you a moment to to be sure about where you want to be and as a result watch this one i'm moving my foot around the car's not it just feels really smooth right you got to put it where you want it and hold it there for a second for it to kind of kind of get there the pedal feel is really linear and i'd, I'd put the acceleration at like a, a nice like 3.5 liter v6 kind of range of of pull um, maybe a little bit slower than a Model Y uh, dual motor. I believe they're front wheel drive single motor. But that being said, it's zippy. And around town and stuff, you're still gonna be you know, one of the fastest cars around. We talked about all this robo taxi and all this kind of very far looking, kind of radical game changing stuff. But the fact of the matter is anybody who lives in a big city and deals with traffic, being able to just turn on super cruise, like right now, I'm not driving. My hands are off. The car is just keep me in the lane. It watches the guy in front of me and keeps me right there. This is how you uh, decide the level of follow distance right here. So if you click on that, you'll see what happens here. The gap is near, far, and medium. So I have it on near. I've always, maybe that's a Californian in me, but I've. All right, so I just had a chance to drive about 30 miles here in Southern California with the Chevy Bolt. I gotta tell you, I've, I'm pretty impressed. I think uh, I think this is a vastly superior product to what they used to have. Plus, the larger size is going to lend itself really well for families, which is what we're going to check out when we get back home. So let's see what the charging standard is, by the way. Same as the Mach-E, which is CCS, which means you got Electrify America. You've got most of the chargers available to you. So let's look for cameras on this thing. Uh, there's one here, and then you've got. You got one there, if not, it looks like just one, which means they have to have one here, yep. So this camera right here is what Tesla doesn't have, which is I think one of the reasons why the bird's eye view might not be fully possible because I don't, don't think they have a, a shot this way uh, that, that would cover it. But that, the camera up on top, there's one right here. You have to have, yeah, there's one right there, of course. And then one right there. And I think you're gonna have radar and sonar all on the bumper, as you'd expect. Let's take a look at the front. We're gonna do that more when we get back to, but let's just take a look. There we go, okay. Well, that is why there is no front. The rims and wheels are small, kind of rides like it. It's been really fun driving this car. Overall, I, I, I gotta say I'm impressed. This is a really hard segment to go after. You're going after like family people, who have kids and strollers and all that kind of stuff with a car for which there are hundreds of gas options out there. And at this point, where, where we are with EVs, this is a really tough segment because the average person is gonna think, I can have the Chevy Trax, which has five minute fill-ups and gas stations that I'm familiar with, and I can have it for less money. It's important that GM does well with this car. I think the EUV will be a much better selling car. The, the, the chaps I was speaking with were, were guessing that it'll be like a 60-40 split EUV versus a Bolt EV, but I actually think it's gonna be way more EUVs than that. Let's break this down to a couple different categories and stuff. Interior fit and finish is vastly improved. The door feel, it, it has more of a solid kind of luxury door feel compared to the old Bolt that was very economy car. You just, when you close the doors, it felt very tinny and you can just tell you were in an, in an economy car. And that 
feedback generally goes around the car. I think this is a kind of a vegan leather and it's quite comfortable and nice all around. The tech is pretty impressive as well. It has Apple CarPlay, which is what I would use because when I use a navigation system, even the place we were meeting to do this drive didn't show up uh, as, an, as an option on that point of interest database. So they're using some proprietary baked in map uh, compared to what Tesla does, which is they have uh, Google Maps and they update over the air, so they're always up to date. I've never missed any point of interest ever in my Tesla. The bird's eye view camera is incredible. The backup camera just in general is, is really good. The, the layout of the, of, the, of the cluster and everything is comfortable. Honestly, for thirty-one to thirty-three thousand dollars ish in that price range, this is probably the best bang for your buck EV. Um, Teslas are probably going to be six thousand dollars more expensive from here, possibly with price cuts and stuff. If the federal tax credit comes back, it might be closer. But for like thirty-one ish, I think these are these are solid cars. The Mach-E that we drove, to put into perspective, I think is a $55,000 car, and with like markups and MSRP and everything, maybe even 60. There's no frunk. The trunk is deep in the Mach-E. So I'd say this car is kind of a compromise uh, compared to the Mach-E, and not quite a Model Y, uh, to be sure. The big thing is when you use the map or the interface and everything else, it feels very much like an old car company. It, it doesn't have that hip, techie Tesla feel. Like Tesla's UI and their interface feels like they stole designers from Apple or Android and had them build it. And and the, yeah, there was some crazy debris on the road there. And here in the, um, the GM product, here in the Bolt, it very much feels like, an, like a legacy car maker's interface. That's the sort of stuff I think GM should invest in, especially considering that people who are buying EVs today are early adopters. And I think what they want to see is a little bit more of that tech, that cutting edge stuff. Because these are still kind of cutting edge cars. It's not as easy to charge up or fill up. It's not as easy to get around. The range isn't quite what you're used to in a gas car. So I think what really pushes people over the edge is the extra in the tech. So I'm really hoping that they have an over the air update system in place where they can update this kind of stuff and continue to iterate and, and redefine the car. Um, but again, this is a pre-production car. There's gonna be some refinements that are made based on some of our feedback. And, uh, overall, I think you're gonna like it. If you're looking at something like this and you think the Bolt, the design, the new refresh is appealing to you, go see if you can test drive one, either on Turo if you can, or go to the, like a GM dealership and, and take it for a test drive. I'm, I'm thinking that you're probably gonna like what you see. All right, Remy, you ready? ready. All right, look at this car, what do you think? You like it? Come on. <laughs> Crazy guy. Is this the Cybertruck? This is not the Cybertruck, no. <laughs> is it like the Cybertruck? Hey, Rams, you want to get in? Okay. All right, you stand up there. Okay, you can help me. What do you think? Pretty cool? All right. Yeah. You excited? Yeah. What about Raymond? Where's Raymond going to sit? Because this doorway opening is really tall, it's actually easy to get in. So, yeah, roomy. The, uh, the shoulder room, I'd say, is a little bit less than that Mach-E. It's, it's more of a compact car, but good. Headroom is okay. I'm not even close. There's a good bump right here where the rear passenger is. Yeah, legroom is no problem at all. And uh, actually, let me hop in the front and see where I'd be. I'm about 5'11", 6 feet tall. 6 feet on a good day. So yeah, this is way roomy for me. My, I'm almost sleeping up here. I can move my seat forward even if I wanted to. But I could be about here. And there's plenty of leg room in the back. I don't know if you saw this, but here we've got the same floor. So we can fold this up and you've got a deep storage. Fold it down, legs in. And then, uh, yeah, car uh, stroller in. You can either, if you've had the floor up, obviously that'll fit that way. You mean up like this? And then, yeah. No, no problem at all. Well, I'm curious if, if we have the rear floor up. You can't see me? Yeah, this won't stand up there. So with the floor up, it won't stand up, but you can just do this. And that shouldn't be a problem. You want to sit in the front? Come, come, sit, come to the front with me. Let's see what the front is like. The color. <laughs> I told you. I told what do you think? You. Look. 
Is it cool? Can we fit both? Can't fit both, but this is what a travel stroller would look like. Yeah, that's a little more manageable. Finally, a travel stroller and a full-size stroller with the door up. So with the door up, you can fit them vertically, which is why this is possible. Um, something that Mach-E didn't have. Yes, you can, look at that. Travel stroller and a full-size stroller. If you had a double stroller, that would fit too. PJ Maxx. PJ Maxx? Well, let's see if, the, you think there's Netflix on that screen? You think so? There's no TV here? <laughs> Yeah, our car has a bigger screen and this car has a small one, but it does have a screen. I don't think it has Netflix for you though. Look, look, TV. Is that TV? Is that TV? Is it, is it already on? Maybe it's had baby. Maybe it's had baby, but because, because you haven't lost baby bus for You think so? Time. Okay. Well, I'm going to go off on a limb and tell you. Sit back, sit back. Ooh, apps. Let's see what they got for apps. <laughs> okay. Remember you had your iPad uh, Apps is showing up as nothing. My apps is, uh, it shows there's a hard drive of some kind, three gigs, very small, but I don't see anything here. Let's see if there's something else. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go off on a limb and say there's no baby bus, no YouTube and no Netflix for you, I'm sorry. Maybe you can tell them. The app, Netflix on a TV. He's taking my camera. He's <laughs> When you have an electric car and you have kids, sometimes you gotta sit around for 30 minutes while they bite you. Ow, why are you, why are you biting me? You gotta wait for 30 minutes while you charge the car and anything you can do to keep them occupied is, is that much more sanity. So that is a good little tip, Remy. I think you're right, GM, uh, some good feedback. Remy, so tell me, do you like the car? Yeah, what do you think? I How about over it. here? How about the front, do you like it? Yep. Yeah? yeah? What does that look like? X. X, yeah? Or a T. If you hear my son keep keep talking about Shadow Facts, Shadow Facts is the name of our uh, Tesla Model 3 performance right behind you, and that's pretty much the metric and the 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 measuring stick for all EVs for him. But honestly, if you've got kids and stuff and you're trying to go electric, this probably should be on your list as like one of the top cars you got to look at. Maybe like an ID4, depending on how much that cost. A Model Y, probably a little bit more money there. But this is these are some of our choices in the U.S. What are you doing over there? <laughs> you crazy boy? <laughs> yeah? You too? Yeah, now you guys now you guys have a little bit of an idea of what we deal with. Hello. <laughs> Hello.